isn't on this schedule. She contacted me later, but I wanted her to share about um, our immigration and what our district is doing. So I shared a little bit about my heart for missions and being a missionary to the mission field that's coming to the United States. And um, it's been a journey. And just the other night, and this is not part of my presentation, I'm adding to it. Um, just the other night, I was walking into work, and um, it just it just hit me anew. Just the sense that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing in doing this. Um, God had brought a connection I made on the district in 2009 with a connection I made last year to help a person who's a member of a church on our district who got in some, had an issue this week. And, um, It just hit me that how God has been leading in me, leading me in this direction for so many years by the different ministries I've had in different churches to people outside um, the church in other cultures from other countries, whether even at work, um, the interactions I've had with people from other cultures at work. Um, and it just, I mean, you know, I was almost in tears as I walked in my stockroom because I just felt God all, all over me. Um, my name is Reverend Diana Potter, and um, I was going to say this is Cynthia Hollingsworth, but she had to leave. Um, we are, will be the directors of Pathways of Hope and Immigration Center for the Northeast District of the, in Oklahoma. Um, I just found out today that we got approved to be a District Compassionate Ministry Center, um, which means we are approved for 10% giving. Um, Pathways of Hope mission is to assist immigrants on their pathway to, through the steps of our immigration system to achieve, retain, and or advance their legal status as participants in our country. To perform these duties with excellence and assist immigrants in feeling welcome in our society. To assist staff and larger community in understanding the complexities of what immigrants face in the process. To assist staff to grow in their desire to assist immigrants through training and support. This mission serves the surrounding immigrant community in a variety of ways and we hope to include programs designed to meet human needs as well as engaging in advocacy, education, and awareness regarding the needs of the immigrant population. And I can tell you, when I went through my law class, uh, we, had to, we both had to take a 40-hour law class, I was intimidated. ...complicated, and there's rules for if you're going to be deported, there's rules for if you didn't come into the country, whether you're admissible, whether you're deportable, and sometimes there are different rules. And I, I mean, I don't know how many times I sat there and I said, if I'm, if my mind is being blown away by these rules and how difficult this is, how can immigrants navigate this? Um, the scripture we chose is Isaiah 43, 19, from which our name is derived, and is also our vision statement. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. For Cynthia and I, this has been the start of a new thing in our lives. It started in 2020 with a group in the district studying the book Welcoming the Stranger. Cynthia and I, in 2021, went through the 40-hour immigration training and then started shadowing others doing this work. We traveled to Oklahoma City to be with Western Oaks um, that's led by Arlita 
uh, I can't think of her last name, I think it's Harris, and she is, her her ministry is in an actual Nazarene church in, in Oklahoma City area. Um, also, there's a ministry here in Tulsa that if you know somebody right now who, or you come across somebody right now who has an immigration issue, I really can't, um, can't say enough about American Dream Center on 21st Street in Tulsa. They are they are awesome. They have been awesome to Cindy and I, Cynthia and I in, in helping us understand the complexities of, of this. Uh, <clears throat> we have submitted our application to be certified immigration advocates and have the org and have the organization recognized as an advocacy center this summer. We have already been interviewed by the USCIS, which is the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. From that point, it goes to their supervisor, then on to the Department of Justice. It should take at least six months um, from submission to approval. The best case scenario is sometime early in 2023 to open. We have been told it could take as much as a year. Um, as I said, for immigrants navigating our immigration center, it can be like a wilderness. And trying to find the right pathway can even be hazardous. There have been stories of people getting ripped off by people claiming expertise or wanting to help in tunes of ten to $20,000. There have been people who deported because they were reported by a legal representative to ICE or law enforcement. Then there have been people who were just misdirected down the wrong path of adjustment that caused them to be deported when there were waivers or other ways they could have legally stayed or avoided deportation. For those who are here um, undocumented, the pathways of adjusting status or for citizenship are limited, but in some cases there are waivers and exceptions. We will not be making this journey of guiding people through the wilderness and wastelands of paperwork and regulations alone. We have built relationships with others in the field, including Arlita at Western Oaks Nazarene in Oklahoma City, who has been doing this work for a long time, and Casey Jones at the American Dream Center here in Tulsa, both of whom have allowed us to shadow and volunteer at their offices, where we got to sit in on interviews, gain experience with different government websites, forms, and immigration software. We have a membership in World Relief who is not only assisting us in the approval process, but provides legal counsel, online training, weekly video calls where you can ask questions regarding cases and more. Even while we wait for approval, we are continuing to shadow. We are continuing to volunteer and participate in training. Um, we are con we are. We have met with numerous people in, who want to help or join us in the advocacy work, team building. Just yesterday, Cynthia and I participated in an online demo of immigration case software package that numerous organizations recommended. It is wonderful, and I, we will also have an opportunity to have hands-on testing of the software now until the time that we purchase the software. Um, we are working on planning the office space at Kaleo Church, figuring out various needs for that space, including file cabinets, decorating needs, office supplies, and more. Cynthia has created a, what I call a need list, and we are looking for per people or churches to sponsor a scholarship those needs. We've received a grant, but would like to be good stewards of that fund and not use it all up in the first year with, or with startup costs. So if you would like to assist, or go back to your churches and talk to them. We have a list of needs on our table. At this time, I'd like to open it up for any questions. We had a list of needs, uh, and you go to what website would you go to? It's on our table, out, out, on the, out in the lobby. Oh, yeah. And if you if you have any questions, my num my phone number is 918-805-1964. Um, we also ha I also have a um, Pathways uh, Facebook group. 
Um, it's invitation only because we don't want a whole lot of controversial stuff showing up. But if you if you call me and you give me what your or you text me and you give me what your Facebook um, name is, I'll look you up and I'll I'll try to add you to the group. If if you want continual um, updates, I know for me it was it was exciting today when I asked Dave. Um, about the Compassionate Ministry Center. It seems like every time I turn around, God has been doing something. Um, one of the people from my own church today volunteered to do part of the painting and we go to paint the, paint the office. And I mean, I didn't even know he really knew what was going on. And he came up to me and goes, I didn't know you were doing this. He goes, if you need anybody to do painting, I'm, I'm, I'm it. So, you know, it's just... <laughs> All I can say is, even right now, I know in my heart of hearts, God is in this. I would have never imagined Amen. this two years ago. Oh, I know. And even when I was going through the law class, I was last August or September, and I know I'm going over, but last mm -hmm. August or September, I was reading, I got into the book of Moses. Uh, books of Moses, but the story of Moses, and the, especially the story of him standing before God at the burning bush. And I kept saying to God, I can't do this. This, this is tough. You know? Um, and I, God kept bringing me back to the story of Moses and said, I called you. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. So, um, just thank you for listening. Absolutely.